So I've officially become that lady who stays at home on Friday nights and screams at the kids that are outside making noise, asking them where the hell their parents are. I've literally been trying to film this for a solid three hours and I've gone back to watch it and could hear them cackling in the background, so I've had to redo this whole thing like three times. What I just experienced in the last hour was like natural birth control. Anyways, I've had so many questions on my videos regarding the makeup brushes that I use, and I know that I've been promising you guys a makeup brush video forever and a day. And I know it's taken some time, but good things come to those who wait, and here we are, brush 101. Firstly, I'm going to warn anybody that is very experienced with brushes, this will seem redundant to you, so if you hear things that you already know, just skip through it. I'm basically treating this as a brush school for those who aren't very experienced with makeup brushes. I have a few questions I'm going to answer. I have my laptop next to me. And at first I was going to do a video about just the brushes that you asked me about because I know I have some pretty cool brushes in my videos and you guys have no idea where I got them because I'm underground like that. But then it kind of snowballed into this other thing and now I have a table of contents that I'm going to go through. And I'm not sure if I'll have time in this video but I am going to talk about the beauty blender and my powder puff probably in the next video because this is going to be such an intensely long video I'm going to have to split it into two parts. So because we have a lot of information to cover, let's get started. So firstly, a makeup brush is built up of three parts. The bristles, the furl, and the handle. The bristles are either synthetic or their animal hair, such as goat, sable, pony, squirrel. Most of them are goat, and if they're synthetic, they're teclon or nylon or something of the sort. The furl is either copper, brass, aluminum, and maybe nickel, and the handle is usually wood. The furl of a brush is a really important part because it holds the bristles and the handle intact, and inside the furl is a lining of glue which actually holds each and every one of these bristles in. Now why you need to know that the furl is important is because generally you wash your makeup brushes. I shampoo and condition my fluffy ones like once every week or so if I use them on myself. And when doing so you run your brush under water and when drying the brush you always want to lay it flat. The reason being is because if you were to dry your brush and just kind of sit it up in your little makeup holder like this and it's wet, the water is going to drain into the furl, loosening the bristles, causing the bristles to fall out. And you know, that's a loss to you, especially if you purchase brushes that are a little bit more expensive. So tip of the day, when you're washing your makeup brushes, always lay them flat to dry. Now we're gonna talk about synthetic brushes versus animal hair brushes. The most common animal hair you'll find brushes are made of is goat hair. From my knowledge, the goat doesn't need to be harmed in order to get the hair. Sometimes they trim it off, sometimes they brush it off, and then sometimes they dye them and create makeup brushes out of them. Goat hair brushes or fluffy brushes are used for powders. So setting powder, eyeshadows, blushes, pretty much any sort of makeup that's a powder form or that needs to be blended. So all of these brushes here are animal hair and I believe they are goat and these are used for the eyeshadow to blend and to get different sort of looks and do different techniques with them. Synthetic brushes are typically used for wet products such as foundations, concealers, cream blushes, any sort of cream or liquid base. Synthetic brushes don't really absorb very much product. Therefore, you're going to apply it to your face and you're not really gonna waste a lot of the product. If you've noticed in my videos, when I apply a base on my eyes, if I don't use my fingers, I'm usually using a synthetic brush and it usually looks like this. Even in my last video where I did a mineral eyeshadow look, I used a flat brush. The reason being is because this hardly absorbs the product and you get the most out of your product onto your eye. If let's say you're applying a mineral eyeshadow with a fluffy brush, it's gonna fly everywhere and you're gonna have fallout everywhere. So depending on what kind of look you want to achieve and what products you're using, you're going to decide if you need a synthetic eye brush or a natural haired eye brush. I think I'm gonna do a whole other video talking about what brush to use for what product. Now I'm gonna kind of stem into foundation brushes because that's kind of where synthetic meets natural haired. In the past, the old school way of applying foundation would be with a flat synthetic brush like this. Hardly anyone uses a flat foundation brush like this anymore because they claim that it leaves streaks on the face. I personally still use it on clients because I just blend out the streaks. What you could always 
do is apply it with this and then blend out the streaks with your beauty blender, which is also very common. Foundation brushes have totally evolved and everybody's kind of found their own way of applying foundation because it is very personal. So I'm gonna show you a couple different synthetic and sort of in-between brushes. So we got the old school flat synthetic foundation brush like this. Then we've got the more rounded cylinder shaped synthetic brush like this. This is also a foundation brush. Then you've got the flat top synthetic brush and this is really chubby and dense and this is where you start to get an airbrush finish. This is a Sonia Kashuk brush. It's the flat top kabuki and I absolutely love this. It's one of my favorites. But because the bristles are so short and because there's so many of them, this will blend your foundation to an airbrush finish. This is completely different from these two. Then there's something that's kind of in between and this is a Sephora brush. It's a synthetic foundation brush. So again, this has a lot of bristles in it. It's really chubby, it's really dense, but it's rounded at the top. This also gives a airbrush finish. And then we've got this buffing brush by Real Techniques. This is also one of my favorites. And I would say that if a synthetic brush and a natural hair brush were to have a baby, it would be this. This right here is wonderful because again, it's short, it's dense. The reason why short sort of dense brushes like this are really popular um, for foundation is because they give an airbrush finish. When you apply a foundation on the top of this, it doesn't sink in to the center. It just kind of sits on the surface and you get the most of it on your face. Then you do circular motions and that foundation is just blend it into an airbrush finish. So I would say top picks for foundation would be these three, whereas these two have kind of been phased out. So now that we've kind of discussed what a makeup brush is and the componentry of it and the difference between synthetic and natural hair, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that you guys have sent me that I see recurring all the time. Number one, is it necessary to use makeup brushes? Well, if you haven't already gathered, absolutely yes. Pretty much saying should use a makeup brush is like asking a mechanic should he have tools or asking a painter if he needs painting brushes. Makeup brushes are tools and they help us create art on our face and they help to blend and they help to really pull a look together. I'm trying to get my mom on the makeup brush train. She's still using those old school little eye sponges that you get in like your little Maybelline containers and your CoverGirl containers. Please believe me that makeup brushes are everything. Blending is everything. That's it. Blending is everything. The video's over. See ya. You know, the technique of blending is acquired with time. It takes practice and the only way that you're gonna get there is if you have makeup brushes. So yes, I absolutely 150% believe makeup brushes are necessary, especially when you wanna master makeup application, artistry, and creating a look, you know what I mean? Number two, do I have to get expensive brushes? Are they the best quality? Hell no. We're in 2013, everyone and their mama has a makeup brush line now, and they're so affordable and they're such great quality that it is unnecessary to go out of your way to spend $70 on a makeup brush. Have I done that before? Guilty. But I, but don't compare yourself to me. I'm sick in the head and I need to try everything all the time. It is my responsibility as a makeup artist and a writer and a beauty blogger to try these things out so that I can tell you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Also, I am a makeup artist by trade, so naturally I just need to try everything. I always have to have my little paws and everything, and I have a lot of brushes. The reason being, I freelance, you know, this is my career and this is what I do for life, so I sometimes have wedding parties that are like eight or nine people, and it's back to back to back to back. So if I don't get like a miracle break where I can stop and clean my brushes, I need to bring like 200 brushes with me. So I try everything out and I see what works for me and what doesn't, and then I tell you guys. So no, I do not think you need to get expensive brushes and no, I do not believe that they are the best quality. There are so many brushes out there now that you do not need to spend an arm and a leg on that stuff. Ain't nobody got money for that. And now for my favorite brushes of basically all time and apparently your favorite brushes because you've noticed them in so many of my videos. My darling Sweet Angels, the art store brushes. I've been going to Michael's, which is obviously a craft store, for the last, honestly, like five, six years since I became a makeup artist. Nobody told me to go there. I just kind of went there because I thought in my head, painters and artists create such amazing 
pieces of art and they use such intensely precise and detailed brushes that there must be something for me there. So the first time I went to Michael's, it was like a heyday. I went absolutely bonkers and I purchased like half of these. This is just a fraction of the art store brushes that I own because I clean them specifically for this occasion so you don't think that I am a dirt ball. There's some gems in this pile here and uh, I actually made a little vlog and I took you with me to Michael's and I hung out in the brush aisle and it was really awkward because this one guy wouldn't leave the aisle and I'd have to continuously stop filming because he'd creep his way back in. It's almost like he was cock blocking me on purpose. Like he knew that I had something to do there. So he's like, I'm just gonna like screw with her and hang out in the aisle every freaking five minutes. Eventually he beat it and I got through my vlog. So if you'd like to see my first vlog experience in Michael's, then please keep on watching. <laughs> So you're going to want to go into the art supplies um, aisle where you will see a shit ton of brushes. Excuse my French, I'm just really excited. So as you can see, these look pretty familiar. These could be used as foundation brushes. Same synthetic top. All of these flat brushes would do awesome for a foundation. And then obviously you've got the little prices in here, so $4.99. This would be ideal for concealer, and it's $4.99. It's almost a better quality than um, the other brushes. I would rather get the Taclon than the natural bristle. The natural bristle are really rough, and you can even hear how rough they are. They're really coarse, and you don't want that on your skin, so I definitely would stay away from the natural bristle ones. Moving on. So I have this one, and it is the Angular American Painter golden Taclon and it is $5.99 and I use this for my eyebrows and today I'm going to be picking up this flat top one for my eyebrows because I don't have a flat top brush for my brows and I find that it packs on the color really well at the very front of my brow and I believe this one's like seven bucks or something like that yeah $7.29 so pretty 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 good pretty good price then we've got some other flat brushes here, which can work for eyebrows as well. This would be an awesome eyeliner brush. Usually by feeling it, like it's synthetic, right? So you're able to feel how flexible it is and you can kind of get an idea of how it'll feel on your skin. So I'm gonna skip past the natural bristle ones because I'm not into them. Then we've got white nylon and these again are really nice. These would be great for foundation, concealer. Um, like this one here would be a good concealer brush or um, to apply pigments. If you wet this brush and apply a pigment to the eye, it'll pack it on really nicely. This would be an awesome eyeliner brush. It's very comparable to like a high-end like Sigma or MAC brush. And these ones are $6.19. And then obviously there's some that are more expensive. Again, the white nylon brushes. These ones are a little bit more coarse. I don't think I'd apply foundation with these, maybe for body art. There's a good one here for eyebrows. Then we've got tapered synthetic. These ones are a little bit more expensive. They're in the 20s. Um, I personally don't have any of these ones. I like to stick with lower priced ones that do the job. Obviously these are priced differently because they are for painting. Then there's like short handle Taclon ones and I have a bunch of these and you might have noticed that whenever I'm doing tutorials, if you get a really close look, you'll see this clear handle with the rubber on it. This one is beautiful for eyeliner. Like, look at that, really fine. And that one's $4.99. Again, when you're going and you're looking for art store brushes, just make sure to feel them and, you know, you kind of get a good idea of how they'll feel on your skin. This whole section here is awesome. It's low priced and I have so many of these. I don't want to go through each one, but you kind of get the gist, right? Then we've got these ones. This right here is a flat top synthetic Simply Simmons Taclon. And I'm gonna pick it up because I'm gonna use it for under eye concealer. And it is $5.49, so pretty awesome. You might have noticed that I use the same brush for eyeliner most of the time, and I can try to find it for you. This one right here, 
This is usually what I use for eyeliner. The one I have has longer bristles, but it's more or less the same thing, and it was like $5.49. These ones would do a really great eyeliner as well. Same with these, they're a little bit smaller. Again, they're all within like five to six dollars, and you don't even understand how amazing the quality is. So I'm gonna move back so you can see this general section. And then those are the ones we've gone through so far. Onto Golden Teclon, this is level two artist. I've got a bunch of these as well. There's some good lip brushes here, or even eyeliner brushes. If you ever want to get into like the inner part of your eyelid and you don't want it too thick of a line, this is great. Good concealer brush right here. There's just a huge variety. And this is the Premium Gold Teclon Level 3 Professional. And again, these are like finer, tiny little brushes. This right here is very similar to that really tiny brush I used. I don't remember what video it was, but sometimes I use really fine brushes and this is uh, similar to it. These ones are a little bit pricier, they're like $11.99. And when I say pricey, I mean like pricey compared to the others, but this is still much cheaper than purchasing, you know, from MAC or something. Which, I'm not bashing MAC, I have all of MAC's brushes, but I don't want to buy doubles of MAC brushes sometimes because I don't like breaking the bank and I can find the same quality right in front of me. So yeah. I almost feel like I'm repeating myself, but I thought I'd just give you a closer look. Gold Synthetic, same thing. There's some really great brushes here too. And you can just tell by the handle, like it's a really solid handle. It's got, you know, a good furl on it. The bristles are great. Then we can move on here. These are some softer brushes. So these ones, for example, would be great for like an all over eyeshadow. This is called like a Camel Mop and this one's really soft. I believe it's from Camel Hair and this one is $2.99. So this is an amazing quality brush and it's $2.99 and it would be perfect for all over eyeshadow. These prices, you guys, are redonkulous. So the brush that you guys always see me using, like in my last light brown with a pink lip video, I use this in the crease. It's the Squirrel Quill Mop. Look for this one. They don't really have it here right now, so I can't show you it, but this is what it's called, the Squirrel Quill Mop. This guy is really popular. Every time I use him, you guys always ask where the hell he's from because he looks so weird, but um, yeah, this is where I get him. You know what? This one right here is really nice too. It's like a good crease brush. I might pick this one up. And I believe this one is called the Six Round. I don't see it here, but that's what it looks like and I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna try it out for the crease. It's really fluffy, pretty much the same as the squirrel top. Then we go down here, and these are like multi-packs of brushes, and they're all synthetic, and I used to purchase these when I was in makeup school because I used to do a lot of special effects makeup, and I didn't want to mess up my really good brushes, so I used to just get a lot of like sets basically, and then if I ever ruin them, I could just throw them out. So for example, we've got a set here, it's $13.99. It's a 10-piece set. They're synthetic. You've basically got a foundation brush, you've got a concealer brush, eyeliner, eyebrow, you know, a thicker liner brush. You probably can't see it because it's white, but in here you've got 10 brushes. And of these brushes, you can basically at least do your foundation and concealing with it. Down here you've got a $12.99 set, and these are basically a bunch of eyeliner brushes, ranging from tiny to thick. Another great one, some flat tops and some, you know, dome-shaped ones for concealer, eyeliner, and eyebrows. Then there's a $14.99 set, and it's got eyeliner, foundation, concealer, lip. And as far as how this is gonna affect your skin, basically what I do is I take them home, I shampoo and condition them as I would my other brushes, and then I clean them with a regular brush cleaner and they're good to go. All synthetic brushes are basically made the same. There's no real different chemicals in them and whatnot. I mean, they're synthetic hair, right? So don't be too worried about that. Just clean them as you would your other brushes. Oh my God, they're playing Whitney. Okay, in addition to everything, I wanted to throw this in there as well. If you have a hard time keeping yourself organized with your concealer and your foundation, I would highly recommend buying these like little trays and pouring your foundation in there and mixing it up in there. Saves a lot of mess and I find it to be really convenient. I used to use these a lot when I first started out. Just kind of mix with your colors in here with your brush. There's some bigger ones here. They're like a dollar, two dollars. 
I also purchased my spatulas from here. Sometimes I have to grab product like lip gloss from like a lip palette or something. And I like to use spatulas. These are really convenient. Four bucks. Again, this is obviously more on like a makeup artist level, but even for yourselves, if you have lip palettes and things and you don't want to constantly dip your brush inside the palette, you can always grab some spatulas, scoop it off, put it on the back of your hand or like a piece of paper or something and apply it that way. Another area where you can find brushes is the wood crafts area. And I think this is like the kids section or like the acrylic paint section. Anyways, there are a bunch of multi-packs here. So like $13.99, you get seven piece there's some more seven pieces so in here you've got like a foundation concealer brow fan all sorts of awesome little kits and they're all 13.99 again i don't think that your whole collection should be art store brushes but this is a really reasonable way to build your brush collection with quality brushes so yeah here's another view of the whole brush section again to recap i like to purchase my brushes from the art store because i find them to be really high quality at a really awesome price and i like to save money because i'm about that life i'm probably gonna buy some brushes now and i'm sure i'll talk about which brushes i picked up in the video so yeah i hope you enjoy this little vlog style video happy shopping and michaels you're welcome just hoard you out to all my awesome subbies I guess I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye! So there it is, the secret's out, the cat's out of the bag. I love art store brushes, and if you end up going out and getting any of the ones that I talked about, leave me a comment in the box below and let me know which ones you picked up and what you think of them. I think this is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to conclude part one of my brush series. If you like this video and you want to see a part two, then please give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video and you like my mug and you want to see me on the regular, then please click subscribe below. Everything I talked about will be listed in the description box as well as on my website with this video. As always, thank you very much for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you in part two. Bye!